Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am here today with a little sneak peek at the brand new box of the month kit from Not Too Shabby and I'm going to show you how I make a quick and easy card set. I hope you'll stick around and find out what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm not sure if you've heard yet, but starting with this month, Not Too Shabby is gonna be releasing boxes of the month. The first kit, is going to be for sale until April 26th or while supplies last and it includes three 4x6 clear stamp sets, two 6x6 paper pads, and a package of ephemera. Today I won't be sharing a look at everything in the kit because on April 7th there will be a special hop where some of the design team members will be doing unboxings and sharing projects. Today though I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at the ephemera and I'm going to be making a quick set of cards. Now if you want more information on the kit and how you can get signed up I will link Jamie's video with some more details in the description box below and I will also have a link to the shop so you can get signed up. Normally you could use my discount code and save 10% but because Jamie has already discounted the kit itself by 10%, it won't work on the kit. You can buy one month and save that 10%, or you can sign up for the Box of the Month Kit Club and save an additional 5%, and there's going to be some more perks upcoming in the future. Again, make sure to watch that video that I have linked in the description box below. Now, when you go over to the Not Too Shabby site, if you decide to purchase anything else, most of the other items will be 10% off. So if you decide to do that, I would love for you to use my affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it allows me to buy some new goodies to make videos. Up on the screen now is a look at a set of cards that I made maybe one and a half, two years ago, but that is probably one of my favorite sets of cards that I've ever made. They were super quick and easy, but I just think they looked so neat and elegant. For this set of cards, I did use some die cut stickers from Hobby Lobby. I do have a process video on these on my channel, so I will link that in the description box below as well. But this is a great way also to use ephemera. So today, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be using various pieces from the ephemera kit and making a quick and easy set of cards. Here is a look at all of the pieces that come in the ephemera packet and the theme of this month's kit is lazy day. So it's kind of about pampering yourself, relaxing, just taking some time. By looking at the ephemera, you might get an idea of what kinds of stamps and pattern papers that you're going to receive in this month's kit. There are so many little fun images to color, nice sentiments to go along with it, and some super fun pattern paper. The main focus of my cards today will be the ephemera pieces, but I will be bringing in some cardstock and other items from my own stash. I will let you know as I do the voiceover what I have brought in, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Off camera, I cut and folded all of the cardstock I would need for today. I cut eight pieces of Strathmore Bristol Smooth to three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall. I cut eight black cardstock mats to three and three eighths by four and five eighths. This just leaves a small border around the outside of the Strathmore paper. And finally, I cut, scored, and folded eight top fold A2 card bases with just my heavyweight white that I use for cards. 
Because there will be quite a big border of white around the black cardstock, I want to break that up a little bit. So I brought in my Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder, and the size of this will allow me to emboss the entire card front. Speaking of embossing, that is what I did next. When I emboss only the front, I use the score line that I made on my cardstock and I insert that into the embossing folder until that line lines up with the edge of the design on the folder. Once that's in place, I hold it really tightly and then I feed that through my cuddle bug to emboss it. I just love the extra texture this gives. I repeated this same process until all eight card fronts had that texture. I brought back in my ephemera and off camera, I chose each of the pieces I would want for the eight cards. Sometimes I would put two or three pieces of ephemera together and other times it was just a single piece. Also off camera, I decided which Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers I would be using for my watercolor background today, and I made myself a little cheat sheet. Now I am going to hold on to this with the card kit, and that way later on if I want to do any other coloring, I already know which colors to get out of my container. Now you will notice the orange, I have two different shades there, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Once I had the ephemera selected, I placed it into four columns depending on what color I wanted to color the background for each of the cards. From left to right, I went green, purple, orange, pink, following those colors in the macaroons just like with my color sample sheet. Now it was time to go ahead and do those watercolor washes. I brought back in all of my zig markers that I'm going to be using and I will start by coloring the green backgrounds. Now with this first card, I did want to cut that ephemera in half just to make the floral piece go further. Instead of using two of these, I can just split it and hide that split behind the candle. I added adhesive to the back of it and then I just placed the flowers where I thought they looked nice. I will be doing a very basic kind of watercolor wash look for these, and to get started I place my piece of ephemera onto the Strathmore Bristol Smooth, and then I just scribbled some color where I thought it would be good that it would kind of give a glow behind the ephemera when placed onto the card. Now it did take a little bit of blending and finessing, I'm not sure if my clear blender is a little bit dry and needs to be replaced or you'll see later, I just went ahead and brought in a water brush and that helped moved it so much better. Once I had it kind of spread out a little bit, I would bring back in the ephemera, see about the placement of the color, and then I did go back in and add color where needed and blended it out. Once I was finished with the color for each piece, I set that aside and allowed it to dry while I continued the other backgrounds. On the next card, I used four small pieces of ephemera to create a little cluster. Once I had those arranged how I liked them, I brought in my Scotch Blue removable tape and I put a pretty good strip along the front of that to hold it in place while I work. The rest of it is pretty much the same, but I did want you to see how I did that. Now, if you don't have Scotch Blue removable tape, you could always use washi, but be super careful. It might tear the paper. Or if you have press and seal, that would work as well. Most of the rest of the cards I did off screen, but I did want to talk to you a little bit more about how I colored the orange. The orange by itself was a little too bright, so I also brought in a beige to help tone that down. And you'll notice there I do have a water brush now. I started the same way by scribbling out where I thought I would want the color to be, but on this one, after I added the orange, I added a little bit of the beige, and then I mixed those together before I blended them out for that watercolor wash background. I think this matches the orange in the ephemera much better.
Once the watercolor pieces had been matted and placed onto the card fronts, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width and I added the ephemera to the card fronts using it. This gives a little extra dimension, especially when you can see the shadow between the ephemera and the watercolor. Now I did want to show you how I do this next card because it had those three pieces of ephemera taped together. I made sure when I put the foam tape on the back that the strips would overlap between the pieces and help those stick together. The scotch tape releases super cleanly, it doesn't tear anything, and I can actually save this for later. Now to glue down the little flaps on the front that wouldn't have the foam tape keeping them together, I brought in my art glitter glue, placed a couple dots beneath those, and then I set it to the side to dry beneath a clear stamp block. Once those were all dry, it was time to add a little bit of embellishing. And to do that, I brought in the sequins that Jamie included with my package this month, and there are pink, light yellow, and purple sequins. I also brought in some tools to help me, my pair of non-stick scissors, some mini glue dots, and my little square plastic tray to hold the sequins. What I did was place three glue dots down on this card where I wanted the sequins to be, and then to bring out the purple in the donut, I placed four of the purple sequins from the mix. Now some cards I did five sequins, but you'll see that here at the end how I switched it up. I tried to just use accent colors mostly. While I continued to work on the sequin placement, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Now I know that these are always just for fun, but today's is even more so. It is just a simple this or that. Sequins or enamel dots, which do you prefer? If you're going to answer it, which I would love you to do, you can just put your answer in the comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered it. For me, I definitely prefer sequins. I love, love the look of enamel dots, but I am, I guess, frugal when it comes to crafting, and I can get a whole lot of sequins for the same price as enamel dots. Let me know your thoughts. Here's a close-up look at each of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these quick and easy cards using the not too shabby April card kit of the month. I had tons of fun using the ephemera to make these quick cards and I did leave sentiments off them so when I go to send them to someone they aren't necessarily for a specific occasion, they're just kind of blank note cards. These would also make a super cute gift for a friend, a family member, or a coworker. You could just wrap them up real cute and stick a tag on them. Don't forget to go subscribe to the Not Too Shabby YouTube channel so when the hop goes live on the 7th, you're ready to watch all of the videos. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.